when I first got the Beatles one, I would always skip over Yellow Submarine. And I think even when I got my first MP3 player, I didn't even upload it to it. It wouldn't be until I began exploring each album in their entirety that I finally listened to it and really enjoyed it. It has a great sea shanty feel paired with the infectious fun of the Beatles, and I really regretted ignoring it for so long. The song was almost entirely a Paul creation with some small contributions from John and their friend Donovan. Paul said, I remember lying in bed one night. In that moment between when you're falling asleep, that little twilight moment when a silly idea comes into your head and thinking of Yellow Submarine. We all live in a yellow submarine. The song was specifically written for Ringo to contribute to their upcoming album, Revolver. John helped with some additional lyrics, but would later state that despite helping with, with the track, that it was all Paul. Like many of the group's tracks at this time, there were rumors that their LSD use was covertly woven into the track. While it's safe to say that psychedelic themes of the era are present, to say that the whole track is drug-fueled would just be plain wrong. The band's good friend Donovan came up with the line, Sky of Blue, Sea of Green, and Our Yellow Submarine after hearing Paul working on the track. The fun and childlike nature of it bled into the recording, with the band using all kinds of crazy contraptions and objects in the studio to create the sound effects. Rhodey Mal Evans marched around the studio with a large bass drum. Rolling Stone member Brian Jones clinked glasses together. Chains were drugged through water and bubbles were blown into buckets. John would famously yell from the studio hallway for the sub instructions. The chorus was made up of friends, wives, studio technicians, everyone, and they all helped to cap off the joyous feel of it all. There was even an unused spoken introduction to the track with the sound of people marching that was left off. You can find a link to it below and hear it. The brass section has two possible origins. Some have said that it was pulled from the EMI tape library, while others have said it was performed by some in-house musicians during the recording sessions. One of John's lines was left off the stereo mix but can be heard on the mono and recent releases. The single, with Eleanor Rigby, and the album were all released on the same day in the UK to great fanfare and sales. It peaked at number one in the UK and did well in the United States too. It's long been suspected that the track wasn't as big in the United States due to John's then recent comments about Jesus and the band. The track's whimsical imagery would serve as the inspiration years later for the animated film version. From here, the submarine, the story, and the good nature of it all would become part of the band's iconography and of pop culture as a whole. Like I said, I didn't appreciate this track when I was younger, but as I've gotten older, I've learned to embrace it. Things don't always have to be so serious all the time, and it's important to let our minds wander and dream of fantastic things. As they say in the film, it's all in the mind, you know? The content on this channel is made possible from viewers like you. Help the channel grow by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.